till you get it just right. Hey there, bike blogger here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Avid Shorty 4 cantilever brake levers. Uh, first thing you want to do is get some gloves. You don't want to get things really messy. Uh, you'll need a 3 millimeter Allen wrench and a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. All right, the next thing you'll want to do is if you're reusing brake pads, you'll want to clean them. I recommend using something like isopropyl alcohol. Just uh, spray it on some paper towels or something like a clean rag and just rub the pads until all the black gunk is off of them. Similarly, Go over to your bicycle and make sure the rims are clean. So go across the rims, make sure they're not really dirty. Now I'm going to go over the different parts of the Avid Shorty 4 brake lever. You got the right and the left. On the right, you got the tension bolt, and on the left, you got a slot for the straddle wire. This is the straddle wire. You get two of them. Uh, uh, I don't have the other one with me now, but they're two different sizes. We're going to get into that in a little in a moment here. Um, now, for the brake pads, you'll want some sort of brake pads. Uh, I recommend the Salmon, Salmon, Salmon type uh, by Cool Stop. These are the Supra Two. Uh, the Mountain type are also just just fine. Um, now, moving around these spacers or washers, you can achieve different distances uh, for the brake when you mount it in the slot here like this uh, to, you know, get closer or further away from the wheel rim. We'll get into that more in a moment here. Now, if you look at the arm here on the Avid Shorty 4, uh, there's this, there's this uh, three millimeter Allen bolt here. This is the return spring, uh, this black thing here actually. Um, you'll want to back this out a little bit because you're going to want to get this little uh, divot here on the end, this point right here, in the slot on your bicycle. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, let's see what else. Uh, there's a bolt here for mounting it onto the bicycle, and uh, there's also a washer. Actually, the washer is right on there right now. Um, anything else? Looks like that's about it. All right, so that just covers it. That's the Avid Shorty 4 in a nutshell, all the different parts that you'll be dealing with. Now, let's go take a look at the bike. All right, we're looking at the bicycle now here. We got these things that stick out from the fork. They're called bosses. And you take the brake arm and you slide it on one of these. Now, there are also three holes here. You'll see on the, on the left side here of this boss. And you want to probably put it in the middle hole there. The upper and the lower hole are for high and low settings. Uh, you might need to pick a different hole depending on your bicycle setup. Uh, but generally speaking, just, just use the middle one and you should probably be pretty good. But sometimes when you slide this on here, it won't line up to that middle hole because you need to back off or back off this return spring um, bolt here. So you might have to move that around to make it so this thing moves and you can get this uh, uh, things sticking out here <laughs> on the brake arm to slide into that middle hole. And before you do this, you'll want to lightly grease the boss here on your bicycle frame because you want a smooth action going with that brake arm. So I've already greased the boss. Now I will just simply slide on the brake arm here. This is the right brake arm. This is where the cable will go through. So we'll just go ahead and slide it on. And again, we want to make sure we line this thing that's sticking out up with that middle hole, just like that. Okay, so uh, we get our washer on here and our bolt. So we'll just put those on here like this, and this will uh, mount the brake arm to the bicycle. It may be easier to do this uh, with the wheel, not inside the fork here. Um, 
So I might recommend removing the wheel when you're installing the brakes just to make it a little easier on yourself. Okay, so we got this tightened down. This should move nice and smoothly. Okay. Now let's get the other side on. Okay, so this is the left side. I already have the brake pad installed on this side. Um, so again, we're going to want to line up this uh, thing sticking out here on the brake arm with that middle hole. So we'll just slide this on again. I already greased this. So we'll just slide it on here like this. There we go. Just like that. And we got our greased bolt here with the washer. And we'll just go ahead and screw this down. Okay, now I'm going to install this brake pad on this brake arm here. I did this one differently than this one because I want to show you the process for one of them. So again, here is our brake pad. And let's go through the different pieces. What I'm going to do, oh, and by the way, when you have one of these washers on here and you're having trouble getting it off because it might be really stuck on here, just use some pliers and yank it off. That worked, that worked fine for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do little tiny skinny washer here. And then I have these other different sized washers. I'm going to use this next bigger washer. And note that it's concave. So it sort of, you know, is dished. Uh, like a bowl on one side and it's flat on the other. So I'm going to want the bowl side like this, like drinking out of it as a cup. I'm going to want that on like this, facing up. And just slide it onto the, the bolt here. And then I got these two other pieces which are identical. They're also um, uh, they also are curved, you know, they got a sort of a dish to them. Um, so what we want is we want the part that's uh, going up like a dome. We want that down inside this part that's like a bowl. So they, they, they sit inside each other like that. I'm trying to explain it very simply, so I hope that I didn't confuse anybody. Um, and then next, what I'm going to have is the brake arm in between here. And then what I'll do is another, just a similar sort of situation. I have a bigger uh, washer here that looks like a cup. And this uh, dome-looking washer will s sit right inside there like that. And then I'll have one more tiny washer on the far end. And then I'll have this nut to screw it all down with. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about it. And by moving these washers around, you can achieve different types of spacing. For instance, these are the Avid Shorty directions for installation and operation. Link in the description below. Uh, uh, it should explain it very well to you. Um, I'm just sort of running through it in, in a demonstration video here now. But you can see by moving these spacers around, you can achieve different sort of spacing away from the wheel rim. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. So link in the description below with, with the installation instructions on this Avid Shorty 4 brake lever. So let's go ahead and install the brake pad. All right, installing the brake pad on the brake arm. Little tiny washer, and then this cup sort of washer here, and then uh, this dome-shaped washer. The dome goes down inside the cup like that, so now it's, it's flat. And then we place this on into the slot for the brake arm. Uh, these Cool Stop Super 2 pads, you want the, the longer part on, on the back side here. You can even tell there's an arrow here pointing that way for the rotation of the wheel. Anyway, so we'll just go ahead and take this, uh, this threaded rod here and slide it into the slot. And now for the other side. For the other side, we got another one of these domed washers. Have the dome face out away from us here. Slide that on. <clears throat> and then we got this cup looking washer. 
cup faces away from us and you know captures the dome so now it's again flat looking at a flat surface there and then we put the little tiny washer on blast here trying to hold it all together like this it's a little washer there on the end and then the thing that holds it all together the uh this bolt here this bolt here will hold it all together for us so we'll go ahead and thread that on on the end here just like that and now what was the deal with all the with the dome and the cup looking washer and everything it allows for different angles of the brake pad uh, to get it all perfectly aligned basically in troubleshoot um, Let's just go ahead and tighten it down now. All right. So you see what it looks like here now. You know, nothing, none of the cables are attached yet, but you know, it just sort of, it sort of looks like this right now. And you want to make sure that all these washers here are pushed all the way up against the brake pad. See, there's a gap there. We need to fix that. by simply tightening down this bolt it should all compress see it just compressed on there so obviously make sure it's tightened down right so now we need to get the uh, brake pads uh, aligned and everything so uh, rearranging all these spacers here is what's called uh, checking the pad spacing. That's step number two on the Avid Shorty instructions. Because basically what you want is you want these brake pads, when they hit the wheel, you want, it, want them to hit the wheel squarely, evenly, uh, and you want them to be parallel with one another. So again, this, the Avid destruct, instructions, destructions, <laughs> instructions, explaining it quite well here. Uh, you want them parallel with the wheel rim when they hit. And then the next step is to align the pads. You want the top of the brake pad about a millimeter under, you know, below where the, um, where the tire would be. Uh, and then you tighten down the brake pads. So taking a look at this real quick. We probably want to loosen this a little bit. And again, we're, we got a slot here so we can move the brake pad up and down. And we just want to get it, you know, sort of you know, about a millimeter below where the, where the um, tire is. So when it hits, when it hits the wheel, I could raise it a little bit. When it hits the wheel, it, uh, it, it takes all that braking surface and gets the maximum power out of, uh, you know, you get the maximum power and braking uh, possible here. So... You'll have to play around with it a little bit. Again, uh, it will move around on you and stuff, so you're going to sort of need to hold it with your hands. Another good reason to wear some gloves. Uh, make sure you don't get oil on the gloves either, though. Looking straight head on at them here, they are parallel. They look pretty good to me. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next step. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install the cable now. I already have the brake cable fed through the bicycle. This is the straddle cable that comes with the brake arms. Uh, this side with the cable in goes on the left where it goes into that slot on the left. And on the right side, it's got this housing here. And we'll go ahead and send our regular brake cable through the housing. There are two notches on it. We'll send it through the left notch because it's in line with the housing. So let's go ahead and do that. Just like that, bring it up here. Now let's go ahead and put the, uh, the straddle cables, cable end here in the left side. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll send our regular brake cable through the tension bolt on the, the right brake arm here. Feeding it through the brake arm now. Uh, make sure that you snap this, uh, see the, how there's a bend to this cable? Make sure you snap it back into that middle notch here now, once we get it fed through here. And, you know, how far do you pull and then tighten down on the 
brake arm here with this tension bolt. Well, you want to get it such that these pads are about eh, two or three millimeters away from the wheel rim. So figure out what it takes to get there and then tighten down the tension bolt with the five millimeter Allen wrench. Now we need to center the brake. Um, it looks pretty center, just looking at it, it looks pretty good. Uh, it might be a little closer on this side than it is on this side. And what you do is the Avid Shorty 4 has these return spring bolts here. And uh, by tightening them and loosening them, you can move the brake, uh, the brake back or left or right, basically. So for instance, if I take this bolt here and I tighten it down, it pulls this brake away from the wheel. Similarly, if I tighten this one down, it will move the brake further away from the wheel. Now, again, like I said, what I want is about eh, two to three millimeters away from the wheel rim. So let's just go ahead and squeeze the brake lever. It seems pretty good. Uh, now, what do, you, what do you want it to feel like when you're squeezing the brake lever here? Well, you want sort of a spongy feel. Now, I know, you know, some people won't prefer that. They want immediate, you know, they want to really feel it right away, basically, rather than a sort of a spongy, squishy feel. But honestly, that's what you want uh, because you're going to get more power out of it that way and, uh, you know, your braking power. You don't want the brake lever to, when you squeeze it, you don't want it to go all the way and hit the... Um, hit the handlebar there, and if it does, then you need to readjust the tension, make it tighter, basically. That looks, that feels better. Uh, double check, see where the brakes are, okay. Uh, next thing you want to do is spin the wheel. I don't hear any brake rubbing, that's good, you don't want it to be rubbing. Stops the brake pretty well. Uh, now, let's squeeze the brake lever and listen and see if we can hear any squeaking. Now, what I'm looking for is a squeaking sound on the brake pad on the wheel rim. If there was any sort of a squeaking sound, that means the brake pads aren't, you know, setting squarely on the wheel rim. And when that happens, you can get a real loud screeching or squealing sound with your brakes. Um, one thing that everyone recommends is to tow in the brake pads, but towing in the brake pads will not really help you if you don't have your brake arms set up properly. And that goes back to where I was saying uh, there are those three holes. You might remember there are three holes on the fork here and you want to use the middle hole because generally that's what works, at least for me. Um, and if, it, if one was on the, uh, the, high, the high location and the middle location over here of those, you know, those three holes, then that could probably be causing all sorts of issues. And so you need to go back and make sure that your brake calipers, your brake arms, are actually installed properly to begin with before you start rearranging the brake pad and making sure it's towed in because that's not really going to help if, you, if your brakes aren't even installed properly to begin with. And ideally, the tow-in method, that's where you, you, know, you take something like a, a business card or a credit card and you stick it underneath here and when you're tightening down these brake pads, it makes it so there's just a millimeter difference basically in the front uh, hits the, the wheel rim before the back of the brake pad hits the wheel rim. Um, and that will also eliminate any sort of screeching noises you might be getting from your brakes. All right, so that was no, step number seven. Uh, step number eight, check the clearance. Uh, when you squeeze the brake lever, you want to make sure you have a minimum of 10 millimeters of uh, uh, distance right here from the cable stop. I got plenty of clearance there. Uh, test the system. You want to squeeze this brake lever and these brake pads several times to release, uh, you know, because cables will stretch over time. So you just want to sort of do it now 
and make sure it's working well now before you actually get on the road and possibly something, you know, comes loose on you or something. Um, uh, so you want to make sure that that tension bolt is down really nice and tight, of course. And uh, so that's, uh, that's about it. Um, you know, I talked again about pad alignment, moving the spacers around. It is a little confusing, but uh, you can figure it out uh, if you actually have this. You'll see there's all these different pieces, and depending on which order you put them in, you can move the pad, you know, further or closer on this side of the surface of the brake arm uh, to get it closer or further away, uh, depending on what you need to do. Uh, anyway, so that, that covers it. All right, so I got my brake pads installed and everything here, of course. Uh, the one thing I wanted to mention with brake noise, squealing, squeaking, uh, chattering sort of a noises, uh, they can be minimized uh, by towing in the brake pads. By towing the brake pads, it means basically the leading edge here in the front hits the brake surface before the trailing edge or the back edge here. So look how, see how I have my brake pads installed? There's a little bit more of a gap back here than there is in the front for each of them. See, there's a very little gap there, but in the back there's a larger gap. Uh, and then when I depress the brake lever here, the front end touches the wheel rim before the back end does. Um, now you'll have to, tr it'll be trial and error to get that to work right. Uh, a little tip you can do is you can stick a, a business card or, or something, you know, underneath there like that when you're tightening it down. Make sure that you have that one millimeter extra gap on the back or, or so. Uh, uh, your mileage may vary though with that. Uh, and you may still have a squeaking, squealing sort of a noise. Make sure your wheel rim, again, is clean. I recommend that you hit it with some degreaser, uh, you know, like dish soap, you know, like the soap you use to wash your dishes with in the sink, and then rinse it off with some water, and then hit it with some isopropyl alcohol, also known as rubbing alcohol, and uh, maybe do the same for the brake pads. Maybe try different brake pads if you just keep having that issue. Um, again, make sure your, your brakes are installed properly, your brake pads are towed in, and sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, you got to ride for a while and brake, you know, hard for a while to start, you know, shedding the brake pad material onto the wheel rim, you know, so you get it basically prepped, in, in other words. So once the brake, mater brake pad material is on the wheel rim, then your uh, noise may go down. So this concludes how to install the Avid Shorty 4 brakes. Uh, I hope this video helped demonstrate to you how you install them. Again, link in the description below for all the written instructions from Avid. And uh, thanks for watching. Of course, don't forget the end cap.